On the left, a DSLR, an EOS 50D. On the right, a Fujifilm X-T2. The obvious thing is that the DSLR is bigger and the Fujifilm X camera is smaller. Also, the Fuji is lighter than the DSLR, giving the advantage, obviously, of when you're carrying around a camera. Both the Fuji mirrorless camera and the DSLR EOS 50D have the advantage of having interchangeable lenses. Um, the difference basically with the mirrorless Fuji is that there is no mirror contained within the camera. Therefore the size of the camera is reduced and also the weight. The mirror is used in a DSLR in order to show an image through the viewfinder straight through uh, or an image from the mirror. In the case of the mirrorless the, the technology is now there so that the viewfinder image can be picked up directly and electronically from the digital sensitive plate within the camera. In order to set the camera to fully automatic operation, um, all three settings, that is the aperture, the shutter speed and the ISO setting, need to be set to A. The A can be seen all of those three settings are a red A. So if all of those are set at A then the camera will be set to fully automatic operation. On the other hand a popular setting is a, se is a semi-automatic setting normally referred to as aperture priority. In other words you can set what aperture you like manually uh, and that will dictate for instance, your depth of field. Um, having set the aperture uh, to the one that you choose, the camera will then calculate automatically both the ISO setting and the um, shutter speed. Alternatively, the camera can be set uh, by choosing the shutter speed that you require on the left-hand dial um, so that will be set to the shutter speed, for instance, um, 1 200th uh, that you may choose. Um, and then the uh, aperture setting um, on the lens will be set by the ring to a red A. And similarly, the um, ISO setting will be set to a red A. So you've set, now set the camera so that you have chosen those two settings and the camera will automatically calculate a corresponding shutter speed that will give the required light exposure. So you may ask why have we reverted to um, the dials and the settings um, as of old in a way on the top of the camera. This actually makes the camera very intuitive to use and at your finger pit fingertips you have the most important settings that you may wish to select quickly whilst shooting with the camera and as we've said that is aperture on the lens, ISO setting on the camera, right hand dial, next dial shutter speed and left hand dial is the exposure variation all at your fingertips um, and it's a very intuitive and easy camera from that respect to use. So here we have it then, a closer view. Um, now starting on the left, as I previously said, we have this dial for setting the ISO. The ISO, as I've said, being the sensitivity of the digital camera plate to light. So simply by turning the dial, um, you can increase or decrease the ISO setting. The ISO setting has a range of 200 up to 12,800 and is a very effective uh, way of setting the sensitivity uh, with low levels of noise even at high settings of, of ISO. Another little feature is the fact that you can lock this by pressing the button in the middle which will actually lock it so that whatever you've set it to cannot be disturbed without releasing the button again. 
Okay, next up is the is the um, shutter speed setting. Again, a very similarly operated dial. Uh, the dial can be unlocked by pressing the button and your shutter speed can be set and selected and then locked in position. Again, at the right hand, on the right hand side is your exposure variation. This is obviously used to uh, vary the lightness or darkness um, of a particular shot. Here is simply the shutter control um, of the camera, uh, which is obviously pressed to take the photograph. Uh, and the on-off switch is all also contained uh, in the same area. As we said, the, um, there's an aperture ring on the lens. Uh, and there you are, by rotating the ring, you can select whatever aperture setting you require. In this case, we have a 35mm lens on the camera, which is the equivalent of 50mm focal length, as this camera has an ASPC size uh, digital plate. So, selection of your aperture by that ring on the camera. And as I said, if all three dials um, are set to automatic then the camera is including that. so the aperture ring the ISO and the shutter speed are all set to A then you can merrily take photographs and it's on fully automatic operation alternatively you can swing any of those three away from A and if I set my choice aperture, um, it, the camera will then calculate and set automatically the uh, ISO setting and the shutter speed. Alternatively, I can put the aperture on automatic, uh, change my shutter speed to what I desire, for example, 1 500th, set the ISO setting to what I wish and the camera will then automatically set an aperture setting for me depending on the lighting conditions. So whichever of those three um, things um, is set to an A this will mean that the camera will automatically set those for you. Obviously the camera can be used in fully manual operation which would mean that all three of those settings would be selected by the user. Another feature of this camera is the LCD screen that can be used to view uh, the photographs. The camera is switched on obviously uh, and the button there is pressed to view then you will be able to see uh, a photograph that you have taken on the LCD screen. Now a very good feature um, of this screen is the fact that it's movable. So by pressing and lifting you can set different angles. We're taking high or low shots depending on uh, what you are shooting. Ha <laughs> ha